Hi, Samantha. I've got a couple of zigzag pictures being reoriented in eclipsed conformations. What I want you to notice in both of them is that something which is wedged in the first picture, so on the top blue picture, the chlorine is initially in front. When we do a uh, spin to put things into the eclipsed conformation, um, we keep the left carbon unchanged. So notice that on the left carbon, what was wedged at the beginning, chlorine wedged in front, that stays wedged after we do the rotation. But when we do the bond spin around the middle bond, what's going to happen is that everything uh, changes on the right carbon only, but not on the the state consistent left carbon. So the wedge chlorine ends up in the back. The back hashed hydrogen ends up flipping over and ends up in the wedge position. And the zigzag thing, which was zigzagging up, following the spin is now eclipsing down. Notice the same thing then happens in the with the red thing. So I'm starting off after I do the bond flip, the chlorine on the left carbon that was wedged stays wedged on the right carbon. We do not change anything about the configuration of the left carbon. Keep one thing fixed, only change on the second carbon. But for the second carbon, for the second carbon, notice that each of the three attachments to it get reversed. If the methyl group that was zigzagged up gets eclipsed down, if that's doing a 180 degree flip, then the wedge that was in front ends up hashed behind. That's the hydrogen. And the chlorine that was hashed behind ends up spinning 180 degrees. He ends up being wedged in front. So summary, keep your left chiral carbon, no change. But if you're doing a zigzag up to eclipse down for the main carbon skeleton, that represents a 180 degree flip. What that means is that what was wedged in front on the right carbon becomes hashed behind, and what was hashed behind becomes wedged in front. I hope that helps, and I hope this uh, little YouTube video comes out looking sort of okay. Good luck.